Okay, so for this video I'd like to share with you some very simple reading activities that would allow you to increase your comprehension when reading, specifically when studying. And the more you practice those activities, the more you will see that this also affects your reading speed. It's no magic, just science and my years of experience as an educator. And all you're going to need is a segment of a text that you want to study, as well as a notebook. All right, now as we go through these, I want you to keep in mind the following number of things. First is to focus on your comprehension, not the size of the text, not your reading speed, not the amount of information, your comprehension. And the second thing that I'd like you to remember is that you're reading to learn, meaning that you're not reading as a means to its own end, but to understand what the text can offer you and learn it. In order to do that, not only you need to read, but also think about what is written. And the better you're able to balance between reading and thinking, the more you'll be able to comprehend, thus the faster you'll be able to go through the text. All right, so on to the first activity. This is what I like to call actively exploring the text. And this is very simple, however, it will immediately start working for you, increasing your comprehension of the text and also setting you up so you're able to go through it a lot more faster afterwards. So step number one is to pick a paragraph and read the first one to three sentences from it. And then step number two is to try and understand from these sentences only, what is this paragraph all about? Try to understand what it can offer you as knowledge. Now, the first sentence may be more than enough. However, authors sometimes add additional sentences so they can bridge between their ideas a little bit better. So it takes a sentence or two to get to the point. Now there are times when authors try to make things too interesting up front and so they forget to mention the most important thing. So they put it in the end of the paragraph. And if you feel like you're not able to understand what the paragraph's all about from the first sentences, go to step number three and read the last one to three sentences and see if you can figure things out from there. Now, if you're into speed reading, you may say, Vash, this whole thing seems a lot like what is on a skimming. And to a degree, you'd be right. You'd be right because just as in skimming, you can use this to sift through paragraphs and decide which of them deserve your attention and which you can leave out so you cut your reading time dramatically. However, unlike classical skimming, in this case, you take your time reading these beginning and ending sentences. So you read, you pause, you think, and you make sure that you comprehend what each and every paragraph is all about. You're establishing a very thorough basic comprehension for each and every paragraph, and this will also set you up for the details whenever you come back for them later. And the other important thing is that you're setting yourself for the other activity, which is to focus on visualizing the information from the text. Now, this is not something that you necessarily do separate from everything else on its own, but rather use it as a tool to enhance everything else that you do. So why is information visualization important for comprehension? Well, whenever we read, we process information on multiple different levels. And although each and every level brings information, with it, not all levels bring what we refer to as meaning. A very easy way to understand it is to think of a word whose meaning you don't know. So you know the letters, you know how to pronounce it, you know how it will sound, but you don't know its meaning. The funny thing is that something similar may also happen with words that we do know. And that's because the level which we perceive as meaning is higher than those other levels. So we may register a word, but we don't necessarily get to its meaning. And one way to access this level of meaning is to focus on imagining the picture which all the words from the text together are painting in our mind. And this actually helps you with a number of different things. First, it helps you with your basic comprehension, in case you still haven't figured out what the paragraph's all about. Then it helps you with your deeper comprehension for whenever you go back and read the text in greater detail. And it will also help you with your focus while reading, which is actually one of the most important things while reading and while wanting to develop reading speeds but more on that some other time. And now onto the third activity, which I like to call question telling. Like fortune telling, but with questions. So what you want to do is to come up with a question and assign it to each and every paragraph from the text that you're reading or the one paragraph that you're reading right now based on the current wide limited knowledge that you have about the paragraph. The question should represent what you think the paragraph gives an answer to. What is it about? Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there are a number of different reasons, all observed by science. And the first one is that our reading behavior actually changes depending on the answers that we are looking for. Because we discern what is relevant from what is irrelevant. We actually get to read faster because we know what we're looking for as answers. And now here's where it gets really interesting. And this is the second thing here. Whether you find the information that you're looking for or not, you still benefit from this activity. Here's why. A study from 2018 showed that our expectation is related to two mechanisms enhancing our memory. One enhances our memory when what we're anticipating 
matches our expectation, and the other mechanism enhances our memory if things don't match. This means that whether or not the question that you abstracted actually matches the content of the paragraph, you will still benefit from this activity. And then if that's not enough, in case your answer does not match the actual contents of the paragraph, you're still fine, because if that happens, this actually triggers processes related to error correction, which is also shown to promote learning. And on top of that, generating questions also promotes curiosity. And although curiosity is not cited as one of the leading predictors of learning, it's still nice to have it there. Think of it as your favorite spice, it just makes things better for you. And these are some very simple activities you can use to enhance your comprehension and your reading speed. A lot of words to describe them, yet very easy to use. And that is all I have for you for this one. Keep it bright and I'll see you next time.